Morning, it's Thursday, and so far we've covered the tour of this barn. Hi, goat. No babies yet. And yesterday we toured the lamb barn, so hopefully everybody's updated on that. Today I thought what I would do, I'm gonna start feeding here shortly, and I've been taking footage all week of all the equipment that we use on the sheep farms. And the thing with livestock farming, it's like, well, stuff that I don't even really consider equipment. It's just stuff that I use every day. And then I'm like, no, it is legit equipment that makes that make my life easier uh, by having it. So I will share with you uh, the equipment I use, my favorites, and maybe some things that I hope I can put on the wish list. Uh, one for sure, I've already got quotes out on, so I will share all those with you in this video. And for all my people that know me already, you already know what my what is on my wish list for this year. So bear with me, but for all, all the new followers here, if you are interested in what equipment gets used in a sheep barn for an indoor sheep farm, then stay tuned. The water bowls, there are two in each pen that have two sides. So there's actually four water bowls in each pen. We can go have a look at those. So these are the water bowls. Um, this is exactly the reason I don't love them. They eat their feed. So here, I'm a sheep. I'm a sheep, I'm a sheep, I'm a sheep. I'm gonna take a mouthful of grain, or a mouthful of TMR, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna eat most of it, but I'm always gonna have a little bit in my mouth, and then I walk, because I'm thirsty, walk, 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 and then I'm gonna dump it in my water bowl. And then it sinks to the bottom of the water bowl, which is fine, but we clean these every Saturday. Carissa cleans these out every Saturday. But it does build up. We just really have to be on these bowls. It's the one thing I don't love about them. Uh, the other thing to clean them, here's the, we have to pull out the plug. They have been able to get this plug out on their own, which has flooded the barn a few times. So the only thing I can complain about is just, you know, my management of these isn't the greatest. The green ones are a lot easier to clean out. But for, I do love these ones because all our lines are buried. There is a heating element in here, a little kind of a puck. It looks like a hockey puck. We've got a plug, we've got all our plumbing and some electrical down in, down in behind, underneath. So it's kind of nice, so we can keep that always plugged in and once the water gets under zero, it will kick on that heating element and keep everything um, at least above zero. I can shut this water gate and then all of a sudden it'll create two pens with access to water. A nice little segue into these lambing pens. A nice light panel and I've talked about these before, but I will have these, I'll be starting to set these up very shortly for you guys. I thought what I do right now is set up this lambing pen so you cannot, can see how easy and, and lightweight and quickly you can set up a lambing pen. <laughs> There you have it. It's easy and light and surprisingly big when it's not in the pen. It seems a lot bigger. So here we go. We have a rod that just puts these two together and these are kind of offset. So one is a bit higher than the, than the other. So you just have to make sure uh, they're squared up right. It's just a nice modular setup. There you go. I've talked a lot about these lambing pens before. When a ewe lambs, I put her and her babies 
in those pens for about 24 hours. It kind of depends how many she has. If she has a single and they're really well connected and I'm really short on space, then I'll let them out early. But if it's a, say a triplet or a quad, I typically like to leave them at least 24 hours and maybe even then an extra day on top of that, just to make sure they bonded, for me to observe those, the third and fourth lamb and keep feeding them a bottle to supplement them so I can get them on the milk machine. I play around a little bit, but these are a nice, when you're lambing indoors in a, an area where, you know, there's quite a few ewes lambing at the same time, there can be confusion. Uh, that's the one disadvantage of lambing inside is just space. I guess the heaviest lifter on my farm besides myself is this. For me, whether it's a bobcat or, or like a telehandler like it is, or a skid steer, it doesn't really matter to me so much, but the, but the telehandler, the good thing about it is this reach. It's really handy with manure. They're really handy with uh, getting bales stacked. Handy when the kids don't want to drive real, real close to the TMR, they can extend the boom and not feel like they might hit that. I've taken out nesting, which apparently I might have to do again by the looks of it. Out of the motor on the on the garage door. Like it just gets used for everything. Changing yard lights. We also use the tunnel handler for stuff like this. Uh, we bought this used and uh, it's just been honestly my most favorite thing on this whole entire farm is this. Along with that telehandler is a lot of attachments. We bought the grapple bucket when we had the skid steer. A lot of the attachments we had for the skid steer, thank goodness we can put over onto the bobcat. So uh, we did buy the stone fork. We don't use that too, too much, but we've been using it yesterday definitely with branches. Uh, we do use in the field sometimes if we're picking stones, you need a second tractor. Uh, but definitely the grapple when I'm doing manure. Another uh, another bale spear. This one we we really dedicate for when we're gathering bales in the fields or stacking. It's just it's got the third prong, which is a bit nicer. Pallet forks, of course. The ones I use every day really are the the little bucket there and the uh, hay spear fork hay fork right there and the bucket right there. That's the stuff I use every day. Some inexpensive equipment that we that we have kind of designed and made are just some ramps. So one we have for lambs, this one, and then one we have for ewes, which is a bit wider, but the same design as, as the lamb one. And these are real nice for loading lambs and loading ewes. It takes away the frustration. Uh, if one goes, usually there's one behind them going and it's just it just makes for loading so much easier. This is the hoof trimming chute and it gets used every three months as well as everything else really. Um, but I've put thousands of sheep through this and it's still working really, really well. I would not be able to keep up with what I have to do with these animals if I didn't have this trim chute. This is a pretty significant grouping of equipment. My stationary TMR, which is a single auger, it's a glorified KitchenAid mixer. If you at all do anything in the kitchen, you know kind of what I'm talking about. I'm not sure how many, I think kgs, the most I've got in this thing is about 1200 kgs. Um, and it really depends on how, how much moisture is in the feed. If it's a real dry, bulky feed, it fills up real fast and it, and it weighs up light. Uh, it can be really full of water and you can get a lot in here, but it's really hard on it and it really pushes the belt. So it's one of those things. I like to leave my rations around that, that max, around eight or 900 kgs before I'll start to, to uh, divide the mix in half.
this is the feed cart. It's uh, basically a glorified ugly Zamboni, but worth its weight also in gold. The difference between this feed cart and some people's is we did have to find one with a top and load to get over that feed bunk. But I love this thing. The other thing are these grain bins. I did pick this one up from the guy I got my sheep from. I think he had his creep in there as well. So that is my creep bin. And of course, this is, I believe, a bin we bought. So this is where we house our corn. I think it's a four ton bin. I'm gonna say that's a four ton bin uh, for corn. And then it's just got a, a simple auger that comes up and dumps right into the TMR. And then every get, everything gets mixed. Uh, I open the door, that's the door, comes up in the conveyor and then dumps in the cart and then I take the cart and feed. Another piece of equipment I use all the time is this Gallagher management system. Uh, it is one of those pieces of equipment that took me forever to get on, but with some good tutoring, thank you Melissa. I'm pretty comfortable with it now. I'm learning stuff on it all the time. Uh, Melissa still gets phone calls from me. Uh, but this is the TSI 2. I had the TSI 1 and did trade it in a couple years ago. It was just really, really slow. Every time I lamb, I put on new stuff that I know I need later. So it's one of those things you have to just start using and start plugging in data. And as you get comfortable with it, I find you expect more from it. And when you expect more from a software, uh, from a management system, you, you start to remember to put more stuff in it on those critical times. So for me, it's that lambing entry. Uh, the more I can feed information into this, the more, I, the more reports I can make when it's done and, and do a better job on selecting use and selecting replacement. <laughs> I just moved this lovely lady into here. This is my nanny. So it's the Grover automated, Automatic Lamb Nurser. So what I will do, this will get used in a couple weeks. Uh, hopefully, hopefully not. <laughs> if, if the mums all have twins, that would be sweet. So when these guys start lambing, if they have more than two lambs, I will take the triplet or the quad off and put it in, I'll build little pens and put this machine right here. I'll set it up probably in and around here and then have the hoses and nipples go into, into that gate and then build, build little pens and add on to them as uh, the lambs get bigger. But what that does is it just takes the pressure off mom. Mom, the sheep only have two teats. And uh, so what I have found in looking at all the data, because I did leave a lot of triplets on that last group, and I just find the ones that just were left with twins did a little bit better than the ones that were left with triplets. So I think I'll try for the most part to pull off triplets as much as I can, triplets and over, and put them on this automatic uh, milk machine. They can have milk any time of day, all day long, um, as much as they want to drink. It's regulated, it's temperature regulated. I will have to, I will have to calibrate and get this all going. And I will show you guys how I do that in a, in a week or so when I get this thing set up. Um, but it's a fairly seamless thing to set up. There's a, the water, uh, my hose is attached into the utility room here and it actually goes into this cooler and there's a little float at the top of the cooler and then it's just gravity fed into the machine and then down here is just basically like a blender so um this 
this is actually like a it's like a paddle almost brings out the powder um, and it's calibrated based on time so I will weigh the powder weigh the water and find the right mix based on what uh, Grover tells me to mix it and then down here is where I connect all the hoses Carissa when I was away washed all those hoses so that's all ready to go and uh, yeah and then just a bottle nipple kind of is attached they have their own special nipples that that I use and it works real well some other equipment on the on the list are definitely these two pieces of equipment so my dump trailer for manure and my manure spreader and manure is one of those things if you do have an indoor an indoor facility like we do manure is a big part of the equation so these two pieces of equipment get used a lot the dump trailer is a VGM uh, 18 TLK so I don't know what that means is that 18 ton I don't really know you don't really realize how big some of this stuff is until you're standing right beside it, it is a, it, so it is a Tebby and I would say it's about 10 years old but I I just never can really really remember but again it's uh it's all washed up and looking good We're, we are talking about equipment and the things that we need this is our farm truck we bought this one we had an old diesel that was on its last leg so we did get this guy a few years ago a couple years ago now I think so I marry this guy with this lovely lady it's a feather light I think it's 16 or 18 feet I thought it was 16 and yet it looks bigger than 16 I think it's 16 16 foot it does have a center uh, divider in the middle which is really really nice if I ever want to do a U and a lamb shipment together I can put the U's in the front shut the gate and then put the lambs on the back so I love this trailer it's really light on the truck and it is the one piece of equipment that I can successfully back up When it comes to lambing, my, one of my most favorite things that I have now that we just installed a couple years ago are these nest cams. So I have four. I have one at each quarter of the barn and they do span across so I can see this pen and I can see that pen. So when I have both these sides lambing, it, they, they work really, really well. I got these nest cams from Best Buy. They came in a pack of two, so I needed to, to, to buy two packs, of course. And then uh, we did have to put Wi-Fi in the barn, which is which is nice for using Wi-Fi for other stuff. And then uh, what it can do is I can I can just when I go in for lunch or breakfast, I can just always have an eye on the lambs. Or if someone's working for me, I can keep an eye on the flock and help them through any potential bad lambings or uh, even just alert them to a lamb. So Jack is uh, he's getting very educated at school on everything electrical. So what I want him to do is I usually lamb on this side of the barn. So the barn is is made up. I didn't really talk about the lights. I should do that first. Okay. So the lights in this barn, I don't use them very much. I use them at night and in the morning when I'm lambing. That's about the only time you'll ever see these lights on. Two strands of lights down both sides. And so what I want Jack to do is put a smart switch on these. So then when I'm in the house and I wake up in the morning, I can turn on the lights from my phone and then I can see the cameras better. So the Nest cameras that I showed you here. In the dark, you can kind of see, but not great. So. If I was able to turn on the lights in here, I'd be able to see baby lambs from the house a lot better. The other thing, if you haven't guessed already for 2020 that I, that I am doing and installing, it has to be done in the next couple months to be honest, is installing some sort of a fan. Uh, the ones I'm looking at are kind of like an upside down Cirque fan. They would be hanging probably one halfway at the back half of the pen and then maybe want to would divide the front half of this pen and it would service both areas and then it would be the same over there so before fans total however when I was looking at the barn across the road now I'm kind of wondering could I get away with like a big a few really big Cirque fans or would that draw too much power so I am going to talk to my vet and now we're under quarantine so I can't even bring him out but I was waiting for him to come and really do some dimensions and figure out what would work best in this barn. 
We have also looked at those, you know, those big ass fans, the, the really big commercial style fans. Uh, so that is another option as well. The, the one thing I can't really show you because I can't get down to the equipment shed where it is being kept is the hay equipment. So we use our John Deere loader tractor and it is attached to our New Holland disc bind and that is how we cut the hay. The hay is cut, put into a windrow. When it's haylage, we can, we can harvest it pretty quickly. That's why we like doing it because we seem to be able to have the only rains of the summer when we drop hay. So the quicker we can get that hay dropped and harvested, it seems to be the best that works the best on our farm. So we do come back about 24 to 36 hours later to start uh, harvesting the hay, which we use a John Deere, we got it last year, a John Deere harvester. And all it does basically, it picks up the windrow and then it, it's got knives inside, inside the guts of that machine and then a really huge blower and it blows it into uh, what's called a forage wagon and then the forage wagons unload at the bagger and then the bagger just keeps pushing the haylage or corn silage or whatever we're using uh, into the egg bag. The bagger is the other piece of equipment. I don't own that equipment. We get that custom done by, um, by a gentleman not too far from here. So the last few pieces of equipment, I don't know if you can call it equipment or you call it supplies, I guess. I feel like I'm always buying what we call general livestock supplies. So here's just a few things that I've gathered up that I use whether I'm handling the animals. I talked about the handling system. That's, I guess it's equipment, but I actually put it as a part of your barn building because it needs to be a permanent part of your setup, in my opinion. <laughs> Good, 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 good. Um, but there are a few things that I use in that handling system. Um, definitely use use a automatic syringe. I really like using these. I've got a couple sizes. I've got the, the two mil one and a five mil one. These come in really handy. We do still have to change the needles out, but it's nice you can put the bottle right in here and then just go along and have this pre-measured and then every you get this, uh, gets the same dose. If you're doing something that requires the same dose based on weight, so you have to be careful about that. Um, the other things, the hoof trimmers, of course, these are Felco. There, I like them, but Mine get really dull really fast, so I don't know if I'm just doing a lot of hooves. These I've talked about in a couple videos ago, and you'll be seeing this a lot in the next uh, week and a half because it's my lambing kit. This is the one for processing lambs after they're born, which means like recording and doing all the things after they're born, like the, when they're 24 hours old. I should almost have another lambing kit for anything that I need for for like a recess for a resuscitation or um, a challenging. A challenging birth lambing so like lube uh, something to pull a lamb if you have to OB gloves uh, that kind of thing maybe hand sanitizer so that's the one thing that I don't have that I should have and perhaps maybe I'll make that up next week the other thing is for my for those lambing pens that I have I also have pails and right now I use this for water and for feed uh, I had a handy dandy trick from my friend Romy uh, they actually run their feed cart they put the pails in the manger and then they run their feed cart right over it so you have all your pails lined up in the manger and it works slick I used that for the first time in December and it was awesome the other thing I did last lambing group was buy hooks so now my pails are hanging on the side of those pens instead of on the ground which I always did and when you put it on the ground you can get a lamb drown in like that much water uh, and they also get really dirty and then an animal typically a sheep won't drink water if there's stuff in it so these are all just things that I've accumulated and that I that I also use as a sheep farmer so other than that I think I mean with with a sheep farm you don't need a lot of equipment you can have a lot of equipment or you have an operation that doesn't have doesn't have the requirements of barely any equipment and a lot of this stuff you can buy used there's always people in and out of sheep and goats so uh, definitely keep an eye out on 
any avenues that you can find for used equipment. I know I am guilty of having a lot of capital wrapped up in equipment. I'm gonna be perfectly honest, I'm, I'm a woman and a lot of things for me uh, is a strength limitation. So if stuff is too heavy for me, like some of the things on the farm for me are, I find really challenging and I get really frustrated and uh, jobs, jobs can be very hard and maybe even dangerous. So I have invested in equipment uh, partly so I can do it as a woman and partly also so I can do it solo because I don't want to have to base my day around relying on someone to help me. So if I want to load lambs, do I have to wait? I have those ramps so for the most part I can load myself. I have the guillotine gate so they don't back up. I have, I have all these things that people probably look at me and go, she doesn't need that. That's fine to the just the common onlooker, it might look like that, but everything that I own, I use. I hope that helps. Uh, equipment is very subjective. It is is very much preference based, and you can have used equipment, you can have brand new equipment, and uh, for the most part, this is the stuff that works for me, and I consider myself very lucky that I have as much as I do, and uh, I can get jobs done safely and quickly and efficiently so I can take care of my animals, which is still the number one priority. Hope that helps. Thanks guys for watching.